Okay, so sample problem 13.4 is going to go through several more of these <clears throat> different kinds of concentration. Again, molarity concentrations, we're going to assume that you're fairly proficient in those still from Gen Chem 1. Molality, we just went through in sample problem 13.3. And so in 13.4a, we're going to go through a part by mass problem. In 13.4b, we're going to go through a parts by volume problem. And then 13.4c, we're going to go through mole fraction. In our next problem, 13.5, we'll actually deal with how do you interconvert between some of these. And that has to do with concentration conversions that are down here. Okay, so three parts to this problem. Part A, again, is going to be a uh, concentration in parts by mass problem. So we have to find the concentration of calcium ion in parts per million in a 3.50 gram pill that contains 40.5 milligrams of calcium ion. So a couple of things to just point out here. Anytime we're doing one of these parts by mass, anytime you see parts, you want to think part over whole. So in this case, the part that we want to think about is the calcium ion. And the whole that we want to think about is the pill. Since we're doing parts by mass, okay, this, this parts per uh, m stands for parts per million. That m is not for mass there. But we want to think about the mass of both of these. And we're actually given these both here. The uh, calcium is going to be 40.5 milligrams. And don't be confused because this says calcium ion. Um, just because we lose two electrons to make it a calcium ion. That does not change the mass. Remember, the mass of an electron is very insignificant. And then the whole pill here is going to be 3.50 grams. When we're dealing with parts per million, so parts per million calcium is going to be equal to the mass of calcium over the mass of the pill. Okay, so again, the mass of calcium being the part, the mass of the pill being the whole. Now parts per million means we need to multiply this by a million or 10 to the sixth. So one of the things we need to think about as we put our information in here, if we just put in 40.5 milligrams of calcium and we put in 3.50 grams of the pill, and if we just take this and multiply this by 10 to the sixth, we won't get the right answer because we've got different units for mass here milligrams and grams. So that's a really important thing and that part over whole, these must be the same units. So let's just go ahead. We could convert either grams to milligrams here or milligrams to grams. I'm going to go ahead and convert this milligram to gram here. And again, this is a case where if we've got 40.5 milligrams, we need to be making a smaller number. So the thousand is going to go down here. There are 1,000 milligrams in one gram. And that will do that unit conversion for us. And then we still need to multiply by 10 to the 6. Carrying out this math, we get 1.16 times 10 to the 4th parts per million. Now I'll say this problem is a little bit unusual in that when you usually do parts per million, you're going to end up with something here that might be somewhere in the 1 to close to a thousand uh, range. Um, you tend not to have numbers this big with parts per million, but sometimes you do if you're comparing a bunch of different things and you want to have them all have the same units for direct comparison, uh, and you do have something that's very small in concentration, then parts per million might uh, be useful there. Okay, so that's a parts by mass. Parts by volume is very similar to parts by mass. Part over whole, and in this case, we're going to have uh, the part, though, measured in volume. So this is going to be useful when we have liquids. So the label on a 0.75 liter bottle of Italian Chianti indicates that it's 11.5% alcohol by volume. So one of the things that's important here, too, is anytime you see a percent, I want you to think of the words in every 100. Because right now, all we have is one number to this problem, and it really doesn't allow us to truly think about how to solve this problem. But if we remember that 11.5% alcohol by volume, if we redefine this, what this really means, this percent tells us in every 100. So in every 100, let's say, milliliters, of wine, we have 
11.5 milliliters of alcohol. So we can redefine, and this way we get ourselves a dimensional uh, analysis unit. So this percent tells us in every 100, so 11.5% alcohol by volume means in every 100 milliliters of wine, we have 100, or I'm sorry, 11.5 milliliters of alcohol. Okay, so now what this means is 11.5 milliliters of alcohol for every 100 milliliters of wine, right? And that makes sense. It's 11 and a half percent by volume. So this tells us we have 0 0.750 liters. So we can think of this as saying, you know what? Again, this is 750 milliliters. If there's 11.5 milliliters in 100, really what we just need to do is scale this up by seven and a half times. But we can use dimensional analysis to help us see that, right? Because this is just a ratio. And if we have then 750 milliliters of wine, that will tell us the amount of alcohol that we have there. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna have 86.2 milliliters of alcohol. And do a little check and see if this makes sense to you. 86.2 out of 750, does that seem about 11 and a half percent? Yep, it does. Always do those little ballpark checks to make sure that things make sense. Okay, so that's a part by volume. I'm gonna to flip to the next page here as we work on mole fraction. But before we do, let's take a look at the problem to get all the pieces down. They tell us that a sample of rubbing alcohol contains 142 grams of isopropyl alcohol and 58 grams of water. Just coincidentally, isopropyl alcohol that you get from the store tends to be about 70% um, alcohol. And so if we say, uh, think about this as being 70% of the total, that's about right. But this problem asks us to think about mole fractions. And as we discussed in class, mole fraction is going to be specific for either the solute or the solvent. And in this case, the solvent is going to be the alcohol because it's present in greater quantity than water. And so it's actually asking us to calculate mole fractions of both. So coming back here to our sheet, calculating mole fractions, that's the amount in moles of solute over solute and solvent combined together. So this is another one of those part over whole calculations. Now the only thing I don't like about this table is it indicates the amount or mole of solute. Well, we're gonna calculate this problem using both the mole fraction uh, for solute, which in this case is going to be water, and then for solvent, which is gonna be the alcohol present in greater amount. Okay, so I'm gonna to flip to the next page just so I have room here for this. But this is the two relevant pieces of information that we're going to need. 142 grams of isopropyl alcohol and 58 grams of water. So again, this is part C that we have here. So let's write down, and when we use um, right mole fraction, we kind of write a scripty X, almost looks like a chi that we'd have for um, Greek lettering. So we want to calculate both mole fractions here. So the mole fraction of isopropyl alcohol, which we can abbreviate C3H7OH, that's the molecular formula, is going to be the moles of C3H7OH divided by moles total. Similarly, if we're going to do the mole fraction of water, that's just going to be the moles of water divided by moles total. Well, maybe what you can already see from this problem is we're going to have to know the moles of isopropanol that we have as well as the moles of water because we need to add both of those together to get the moles total. So the easiest thing to do with this problem right away might be to convert the masses of both of the substances given into moles. So we've got 142 grams of isopropanol. And using the molar mass, can tell us that we're going to have 2.36 moles of isopropanol. Similarly, a calculation for water. Okay. 
gives us 3.22 moles of water. So let's go ahead and figure out the mole fraction for isopropanol. That's going to be equal to the moles of isopropanol, which is 2.36, over the sum of both of these, 2.36 plus 3.22. So that's going to be equal to 0 0.423. You'll notice that mole fraction is not going to have any units with it. Moles will cancel. So mole fractions are unitless. They really represent the ratio of moles that we're going to have here. So that's the mole fraction of uh, isopropanol. We can use the same calculation here for the mole fraction of water, except now the numerator is going to change. Now it's going to be 3.22 moles of water over 3.22 plus 2.36 moles and this is 0 0.577 and again no units with that. Now maybe you'll already see something that there's a relationship between both of these. Since we have a binary system here we can add up the mole fractions of both of these, and they equal 1. Now, even if you had more than this number of components, adding up the mole fractions of all of the individual components should equal 1. Remember, A, B, and C in this problem dealt with parts over whole. So adding up all the parts should equal the whole, which in this case is 1. That being said, if we wanted, we could have calculated the mole fraction of water as 1 minus the mole fraction of isopropanol, which is 1 minus 0 0.423, which is equal to 0 0.577. Again, either one of those ways would have been sufficient, but since we had to calculate the moles of both of them anyway, this was fairly straightforward to just go and use the same formula.